In this video, we are working on equipment at mains potential. If following along, please remember you do so at your own risk. Okay, quick video explaining further issues with the KSGER soldering station. You can get on various Chinese vendors. The main issue is that the case is metallic and metallic items conduct electricity. The problem with that is under normal circumstances, it's, it's fine. But where you have a fault situation, the case has a potential to become live, especially when it's powered by mains. I'm just going to demonstrate the fact that just because this is anodized and it provides a layer of electrical um, insulation, it is not to be relied upon for electrical safety, especially at voltages at mains potential. I've got my multimeter here set up on continuity and you can see that if we probe around touching the metal case no matter where we are because it's anodized we do have a degree of insulation we're not triggering we're not triggering the continuity but we look at the outside socket and the underneath potentiometer here and underneath the dial here to the potentiometer we've got continuity because we've made a connection electrically between the sockets and the front chassis panel, which is also aluminium. But if we do turn the unit upside down and to the detriment of my unit, we start scratching in, we get continuity. But you can see, as soon as we come into those scratch marks, we have an electrical path. Now in a fault condition, if you were to touch one of those areas on this case, and this had a live leaking to the case itself, you would get a nasty shock. And that nasty shock would be unprotected. Even though you might have uh, GFCIs or RCDs in circuit, because there's no path down to a solid earth, the RCD or GFCI may not see that differential in the current flowing through the circuit and, and trip, saving you. So you are at full risk to be on the end of this sizzling until someone finds you. So the best way to combat that is to do a small modification inside, which we'll go through now, and make the case earthed and properly attached so we can guarantee we have electrical connection and our GFCIs and our ISEDs can definitely do their job if in the event of a fault condition. So this is the top of the unit. We will take the lid off and we'll have a look inside. Okay, so we can lift the lid off. So now that we've got the lid off, we can see the back of our mains connector over here. Hopefully you can see my pointer. We have a live, neutral and earth connection. Now there's no discernible connection between this earth and anywhere on the chassis at all. So it's electrically isolated, which is bad news from a fault condition point of view. So what we need to do is get a, a solid connection between this earth point to somewhere on the chassis. So we know when all the parts of the chassis have been assembled, we have now got earth coverage. For the sake of a fault condition, there's a return path to earth that's not going to be you. Because it's bad news, if there's no other path apart from you, you're gonna get a bit of a shock. Now, depending on the fault conditions, it could be di different variations in how much shock you might have. But in the instance of this, it's just not worth the not worth the risk. So it's a quite a simple mod, and we'll go through that and show you how that can be achieved. Ordinarily, we do know that the soldering iron itself does have a path to earth. Now, underneath this board, I will show you the traces that go through a path from earth through a decoupling capacitor through this inductor into the negative output of our circuit. And then that provides an earth back to mains earth for ESD protection. Now electrostatic discharge is just protecting componentry of the device you're working on. It's not for typically earth protection from fault conditions. So we need to make sure we have a secondary earth well, actually, primary earth to the chassis, so we know that the device itself 
under a fault condition is 100% safe. So I'll quickly remove the power supply board from the chassis and we'll have a quick look underneath and have a look at some of the traces and componentry on the uh, earth side of the circuit. And just keep in mind that this whole board is purely just the power supply to supply this logic board here, which ultimately controls its soldering iron. It's only one purpose and that's the power supply. Okay, so we can remove that screw. We can slide this back. Now there'd be one um, obvious difference in my unit compared to most others out there. There's another port right down in this bottom corner. We'll just pop this out for the time being. You might be able to see that there's a port just here and that normally goes to a real time clock battery that will keep the time and date and everything else that you've set in the logic circuit. For my case, I don't care about having date and time in my soldering iron. Okay, let's just test and make sure this circuit is okay to work on. So here is the mains cap, filter cap. We're gonna make sure that that's not holding a charge that could potentially be hazardous. So we're gonna just check that voltage with our multimeter. Can't really see, oh, there we go. Without too much glare on that screen across the capacitor. 0.3 volts, so it's perfectly safe to work on. So this is all the power supply circuit, that's all it is. So what we'll do is we'll rotate it upside down and we can see that now the earth is to the top side of the board and this trace that runs all the way around comes over to here and then there we have an electrolytic capacitor which jumps over to this plane here and then we can see from that, we have another solder joint and we can trace that back to the large inductor. And then that inductor in turn connects to the ground plane of the output. So we know that electrolytic capacitors will block DC, but will pass AC current. This does not have any effect on the output side of the DC power supply to the soldering iron. But in the event that there's an AC coupling, then we have a return path to earth. Currently, the way this circuit is set up, we have a secondary earth. And that secondary earth is from the earth pin, which flows underneath the PCB to a decoupling capacitor through an inductor and connecting into our ground on our secondary side power supply, our low voltage side. That does not offer us protection in relation to the chassis. There's no primary protection from the main side of this circuit. So then we now need to put a mod wire in from the earth pin and make sure it's mechanically fixed and conductive to the chassis of the case. Once that's achieved, we can then safely say and be confident that we have an earth to the case and then the case is now deemed safe if and when a fault condition was to occur. Now, if we look at the front and back faces of the case, we can see screw holes where the front and back panels do screw in. And we can look at that straight away and we'll put our probe in one end of our continuity test and then one in the back and we've got a solid electrical connection. So we can guarantee that we only need to make one connection through either half of this case and that earth protection will then propagate through the whole case through the connections of these plates, the screws, and we can, all, we can always test that after to make sure that we have got that um, full case protection and make sure one half's not protected over the other. Another thing to bear in mind, because this is a clamshell sort of setup for um, a project case, these grooves and the way the interlocks meet, you are effectively doubling up the electrical insulation that the anodizing offers. Now, anodizing itself is not considered an appropriate means of insulating something. So you have to be aware that just because these interlocks, as you can see the case sliding in and out together, so you have to rely on the fact that either you have to bring two earth connections to each half of the case, or you rely on the fact the connection between the two face plates through the screw holes and the face plate provide that electrical connection between the two halves. So the way I propose 
modifying, specifically in my case, I am going to make a solid connection from that earth pin internally to a screw by a drilled hole in this area here and then mechanically fixed on the other side with an eyelet and a crimp terminal and shake proof washers. Now that's the probably the industry standard on earthing an appliance. Now you have to also consider that because we are earthing this back plate, we need to make sure that that earth and that conductivity is transferred through the rest of the case. Now we know that because we're screwing into these threaded holes into the case itself, they're not anodized, therefore we'll make an electrical connection. And this will then propagate through to the front screws and then into the front face. We're not gonna be convinced because we know that everything, all faces and all areas on this on this enclosure have been anodized. And you can see that the tapered faces and the countersinking in this back plate are also anodized. And I've got my continuity tester on, and we can see that we have not got a solid continuity on any of those faces on these tapered surfaces. So then no matter how much earthing we do to this back plate, if it doesn't propagate conductivity or doesn't make an electrical connection to the rest of the case, you've earthed, you're, you have effectively earthed the back plate and that's it. The rest of the case is still at risk in a fault condition. So we wanna make sure that we take off as much as we can of this anodized surface. So then we have an electrical, con electrical connection between the back side of the screw. Can't really see that, it's out of focus between the back side of the screw and its threads. Now these screws are steel, so I'm pretty sure they are conductive without scratching any surface off. They're just black screws, but 100% conductive. So we have to be aware, not only do we need to cut out the anodizing from these four holes on the rear plate, we have to do the same to the four holes on the front plate. So you can now see that the rear plate and front plate have been taken off the main body of the enclosure. Now we have both plates ready for preparation to make sure that these countersunk holes can have their um, anodizing removed so we can ensure a good earth contact between them and the rest of the case. So to ensure that we scrape away or take off the anodizing on the countersunk holes here, we can use a stone you could use a drill bit, but you have to be careful not to um, overdo it and then make f drill through the panel and then ruin the countersinking. So what I propose in my case is I'm gonna use a stone. It's just a Dremel stone, just any old stone. And we're gonna use, use it in a drill on a very slow speed, just to bring a bare aluminum surface so we can guarantee electrical contact. So I'm just bringing in a piece of timber just to hold the edge of our front panel, just as something to steady on. I'm gonna bring in our drill and slowly, slowly grind away. Just till we get a nice Hopefully you can see that. Compared to the hole above, you can see we've got the shiny surface there now. And to test that, we could, because I've only done the one, the one hole, it, might, it still probably won't guarantee electrical connection between the other holes that aren't treated. All right, it sort of does, but it's not convincingly consistent. Only when I hit a slightly scratched surface, we can hear the beeping of the meter. So we can make it uh, more permanent by if we, if we ground two holes you can see that both holes now have a very shiny bare metal surface and that's what we need we need to make sure that's the case no pun intended and then we bring our continuity tester back in Now we have a definite continuity, no matter where we touch inside those countersunk faces. 
So I'll do the rest of these holes and bring you back when I'm done. A couple of slips there, but don't do what I just did. But never mind. The point is still made. Continuity. We can touch in that hole. And we've got continuity here, continuity here, and here. So then we know when our screws are put back in that that electrical connection will be uh, taken through to the case, both halves of the shells, and we will have a solid earth. So now what's left to do is make our electrical, con electrical connection between the back plate and our earth pin by making a little mod wire and an eyelet terminal using our screw and shake proof washers and then we're pretty much done. We're going to pop a hole just in here next to the socket so we can have our screw, our nut and a shake proof connector with our earth on it. Now these, this has been salvaged from another uh, broken part but you can buy these either uh, just a plain eyelet or you can have the integrated shake proof uh, little fingers as you can see here on this one. So I just want to do a quick center punch to locate the hole where I want to drill, just so we don't have drill bit wander. Now this is a bit awkward because I'm choosing not to take the whole socket and assembly off to separate out the plate. I'm just doing this because it's quicker from my point of view at present. So all I'm going to do is put some weight on the wooden block, get this roughly where I want to locate the hole and give it a quick jab. Then we can see, you might be able to see that little mark. Oh yep, yeah. that's where we're gonna drill the hole. So the screw we're going to use is this little, I believe it looks like an M4. Yep, yeah, so M4. So we need a uh, four millimeter drill bit and then we can, we've got a home for this. Okay, I'm just going to bring our wooden block in just to get things off the bench a little bit. We'll bring in our little backing block. Hopefully you can see that. And we'll find our mark and we'll drill our four mil hole. Okay, fairly straightforward. As you can see there. Got the hole and our screw fits there nicely. After a bit of a clean up, just be wary we haven't got any stray uh, swarf, aluminium swarf or anything throughout our circuit. This looks clean. Tap it out just to be sure and we're good to go. So like I explained earlier with the anodizing and how it does form a sort of thin form of insulation, we need to be aware that this is exactly the same scenario on the back of this plate. Now, if we are gonna be making an electrical connection between the earth and this plate, we then have the same issue where it's surrounded by an anodized coating. So what we need to do is just scrape that area and make sure it's clear. In my case, I'll use a Dremel with a small carbide bit and just give that a bit of a scratch up around the hole and we should be good from an electrical connection point of view. So yeah, that's all scuffed up now. That's uh, gonna provide a better electrical connection there. Again, once that's done, just make sure there's no aluminium dust floating about in your circuit. And then we can get on to the connection of our terminal. Put the screw in. And we can put our connection on. I'll zoom in on that and I'll go find a lock washer for that. Just put a flat washer on first followed by a lock washer. For those of you that don't know what a uh, lock washer is, if we look at, uh, let's see if we can get that in focus. 
there we go. There's a large one. Now they're normally identified with that split and you can see the offset split. That provides a bit of resistance back on the nut to prevent it turning in the opposite direction or loosening. So that's a bigger version of what I'm using and this is what we'll use in the project today. So we'll pop that on there, like so, and then we'll find the nut. We'll pop that on. Hold that in place while we screwdriver. Just snug it down a little bit. Now we want to route the earth in such a way it's not going to impede on the inside of the case. So I think just down like that may be the way to go, perhaps. And we'll just kick that up ready for soldering and we'll be right back. So from a side perspective, you can see the earth cable now connected to our back plate and ready for soldering onto the earth pin. Make sure it's the earth pin. Don't solder it to the live or the neutral for that matter. It's got to go to E, earth. So I'll head over to the electronics workbench and we'll solder this up and then we'll do a sanity check and make sure that we have our earth now connected to our back plate in this instance. Just to be clear, just because this is now my daily driver as far as soldering is concerned, my old uh, hacko up the back here is still used, it's not shelved, especially when it comes to repairing the Chinese gear. Anyway more on this. So what I'll do is put some flux on our little connection here. A bit of flux makes everything flow a bit better. Relatively hot iron. Some solder. We'll just give this a bit of a touch up and make sure we can get this soldered It does need a, quite a bit of heat because we are sinking a fair bit. It's a large terminal. So I think that is suffice. That should do the job nicely. So we'll go back to the other bench. In fact, just grab the continuity meter and we'll do a quick test. So we'll go to our earth and one of the holes that we've polished. Look at that, short, short, short. Perfect. So that side of things has been sorted. What we will do is just quickly tighten up that screw, our earth screw. Make sure we've got a nice tight connection Just like that. Now, you can opt to put some Loctite on there if you want, but I think with the lock washer, the anti-vibe or the um, shake-proof terminal, and the fact that it's really locked down, there's probably less reason for that. There's probably less of a requirement because we do have those locking washers and, and whatnot. But in saying that, if you do wish to use some Loctite, use it very sparingly because if you put too much on, you can undo all the work where you have made a path of continuity by getting it soaked up and then the Loctite film itself, then undoing all your hard work and providing a insulating barrier. Unlikely, but possible. So best not to uh, overdo it. Half a drop is all you need on the threads. Okay, that is sufficiently tight, soldered, and we do have an actual physical hard earth to the back plate of our case. Okay, so we have all the components for our soldering iron back on the bench, so we can start to reassemble. We are going to look at, all right, the one with the feet is the base. Crazy vehicles, I don't know if you can hear the kids in the background either. It's uh, next door, running amok. So we'll quickly screw in the, the bottom two items. So let's just do a little bit of a sanity check 
at this stage. So I don't have to scratch up the bottom of the panel again, but I will check anyway, externally. As you can see, that's the back panel now with our screw. And then inside that back panel is our earth connection, which is nice and tight with the appropriate washers, preventing it from coming loose again. The cable's out of the way, hopefully from a crushing point of view. The case should go on snug without any interference, which it does. We get a continuity meter. So what we'll do, we will touch it on the earth pin. It doesn't really matter which way, red or black earth pin. On the back of our connector, obviously that's going to be earthed. I'll turn this around so you can see it a bit better. Earth pin in the IEC socket, the back of the new screw and nut we've just put in, the terminal. Here we go, the front socket, which wasn't earthed before, inside the nut of the potentiometer. And then we'll scratch the surface inside. And then once we break through the anodized coating, we now have an earthed case, which means in a fault condition, we're golden. Instead of you being the path to earth, it'll be to the appropriate protection circuitry that should be in place in your workshop or hobby room or wherever. So this is probably a success. We're going to make sure that all panels are receiving the appropriate earth once I put all the screws in. We know the front and rear face will be earthed. So we're just gonna make sure the shell, we know the bottom shell is, we're gonna make sure the top shell is as well. Snug, not too tight. So I'll sacrifice a little bit of the finish on my top shell here, which is this one, just to clarify and confirm that we do have a good earth. So earth pin on the IEC socket, scratch away at the top so top. Here we go. And again on the bottom, definitely earthed. And we can touch the screws on the front. Now we have a fully earthed and safe case. Near the front. Perfect. So now you have an earth compliant device, safe to use. Okay, let's put it back into service and make sure it still works. Ha! Don't put the top cover on until you've connected the uh, power supply back to the logic board. Ha! Trap for young players. Let's quickly undo that again and plug it back in. I just realized what I've done. Yeah, I won't edit this out. Probably screaming at the screen earlier saying, plug it back into the logic board. Yeah, there's our culprit. Never going to work with that out. Let's pop that back in. Start again. Turn it on. We should have some life. There we go. Perfect. We can still maintain our earth between the tip. And basically any part of the box is sharing the same earth, technically the same earth. We all know that the way the earth to the soldering tip, it's actually uh, decoupled, but uh, in a way where it reduces ESD. There we go. And yes, we are definitely hot. Tip's cleaned up beautifully. Did you see that? Of course not. Why would you? There you go. Job done. The case is now fully earthed, and if in the event of a fault condition, the live the current will be redirected to earth, ground earth, and not through you. Just as a side note, just in case you're wondering, this is a piece of uh, aluminium offcut. 
from a plate, a piece of uh, 3 8 or 10 millimeter plate. Now, this is untreated. There's no anodizing, there's no clear anodizers, there's nothing. You can always tell because you've got continuity from the get go. And yet, when you use the soldering iron case, you have to really scratch into it to get any continuity. Raw aluminium in itself conducts electricity very easily. Just so you know. Thanks for watching.